looking at the fact that, you know, the Greenpeace has been involved with the Movement for Black Lives, their platform, and when you look at their platform, and I would encourage people to look at their a very robust platform, Movement for Black Lives, um, a lot of it is talking about self-determination and self-sustainability, self you know, being able to just to sustain yourself. How does Greenpeace tie into that, and what challenges do you see with the current administration and the policies being put down the pipe? First, let me say, is this on? Yeah. Uh, first, I was thinking about the last question about the biggest challenge, so I'm going to start with that and weave into that. Talk, talk so we can all hear so when I think about the biggest challenge, I think it's related to the fact that there is so much bad stuff coming at us from every single direction. And there is a possibility that it could be normalized because it's every day, multiple things. It could be normalized as a possibility that we could exhaust ourselves. We need to really sustain ourselves. And the biggest threat is the possibility that we don't stand together because there are so many things coming at us. And, and the reason that Greenpeace endorsed Movement for Black Lives and has embraced justice and equity in everything we do is because we know that the only way we're going to get through this is if we stand together. So when they come for black people, I am not black, but I have to stand up. When they come for immigrants, I am not an immigrant, but I have to stand up. When they come for trans people or LGBT or anyone, we have got to stand together. You know, they may have more money, they may have more guns, but we have more people. And our biggest strength is when we stand together. The way that Greenpeace thinks about the environment is that success is inseparable from sustainability, democracy, justice, and equity. We cannot win on one of those without winning all of those. And that's why we've taken such a strong stand on the movement for black lives. We can't have sustainability without equity, and we can't have it without equity for everybody. When we, I'll tell you, to be honest, it wasn't always easy. When Greenpeace first came out strongly in support of racial justice and, and endorsed the movement for black lives, some of our own members wrote to us on, on Facebook. We got comments where people said, not your issue. Um, stay in your lane. Um, stick to saving the whales. One, one person actually wrote to me and said, not your issue. How would you feel if an African American said, let's save the polar bears? And I wrote back and said, I would feel awesome if an African American said, let's save the polar bears, because that's when we have a movement, when we all stand together and see our success as interconnected. We are all better off when we are all better off. So we've got to stick together. Let me, let me just uh, go back to you a little bit. Uh, so we say stick together. And the question that I would ask, what does that look like? And let me give you an example. Here in the city of Oakland, and in other cities, you find that people in our communities have taken up the call to be self-sustained. And it's not just Oakland, you can see it in Detroit and other places where people are like, I'll do my own garden, I'll sell my own food, I'll do these types of things. And in many of these communities, as they become gentrified and more corporatized, people have walked in and said, oh, you can't sell food on the corner anymore. You have to have a permit, a permit that you can't afford anymore. You can't uh, do your garden. You can't have this without having all these regulations. So you have bureaucracy that now shows up. It may not look like oppression because people who are doing it may have the same political affiliations. They may even look like us, but nevertheless, you see people being next out. The most egregious way in which you can see it is how the weed trade has come in, yeah. right? So there's a whole lot of folks selling weed around here now, but it ain't us anymore, right? right? And if we were, you, and that's because people are locked up. So people trying to sustain themselves in a very oppressive situation and do it in a, in a very environmentally friendly way are now being criminalized once again and being removed out. How can an organization like Greenpeace and others really demonstrate that standing together so we don't see people who are selling fruits on the corner being hauled off by the sheriff? You know, it's one thing to be outraged, but how do we now start to implement policy to make sure that people who are poor and marginalized are able to really participate in these wholesome ways in which we can make the environment better? That's for you. I thought you were looking at him, yeah. Um, well, first of all, I think that the right to grow and share healthy food and access to healthy water has got to be one of the most fundamental rights 
we have as human beings. We have got to stand up for that together. The idea that criminalizing growing and sharing healthy food is even an option is just a, a sign of how screwed up everything is today. Um, so I would absolutely think we have to support anybody who's working on this. And there's support like supporting particular legislation. That kind of stuff's the no-brainer. But I'll tell you a specific thing that Greenpeace is doing right now. Is that when I hear about attempts to stop people from growing and um, sharing their own food or taking care of whatever they need to survive, it makes me think about in India when the British told Gandhi they can't make their own salt. They can't weave their own fabric. And what he did is massive civil disobedience. And I want to tell you, I think it is time for massive civil disobedience. When the opportunities to influence the decisions that affect our lives, and what affects our lives more than food and water, when those decisions are made without our input, we are left with nothing but the streets, and we need to fill them. And Greenpeace is really good at nonviolent direct action and civil disobedience. And that's why we have trainings at this warehouse constantly that I hope lots of you are going to. And that's also why we've launched this program called the Summer Resistance. We're going to travel around the country this summer and do free nonviolent direct action trainings in communities that are battling for healthy food, healthy water, um, clean air, climate solutions, to teach people how to do these. And really, the onus is on all of us. We have got to learn how to do safe, smart, strategic, civil disobedience, because that's what it's coming to. And again, if we stay united, there are enough of us that we can put the wrench in the business as usual and force them to make change. And does that and, and, this, and, and, and some of this will bleed over to, um, uh, I was going to call you Brian, but you know Brian. Uh, yeah. 